Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my code refactoring tutorial. This is going to be pretty much the end of the code refactoring tutorial. And in it, I wanted to cover the pattern that seems to be confusing people the most, being the abstract factory pattern. In this tutorial, I'm going to present it in numerous different ways. And by the end, I hope that you completely understand it because it's not that complicated. So let's get into it. Now basically what I'm going to do here with my abstract factory tool is I am going to pop different types of monsters out of factories. And I've talked about factories previously. And basically one of the potential monsters is going to be a vampire. And it is going to have as a attack an object assigned to it. Now the potential objects that are going to be assigned to this are either going to be basic attack or medium attack. And they're going to be chosen because they both are going to implement the same interface. So attack power is going to be of type monster attack power, which is ultimately going to be a basic attack object or a medium attack object. Just basic stuff. Then, of course, there's going to be an interface that's going to separate all the different types of monsters that I can have. But the only difference between all these monsters is going to be whether they have basic, medium, attacks, or basic, or medium ranges. That is it. Every monster and everything about the abstract factory pattern is right here on your screen. So now I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. Okay, so you can see right here, we're going to use an interface factory and it is going to assign attack power or attack range. Whenever I want to make a vampire, a very specific type of monster, I'm just going to implement the monster factory, which is just going to force me to use these methods right here. That's all it's doing. And then I'm going to assign quite simply for every single vampire object that I create the medium attack and medium arrange right there. So there's basically going to be a monster abstract class and and the difference between the monsters is the object stored in attack and range. And as we saw back here, an interface is used to represent both options available for attack and range. And two classes are going to implement that attack and range interface, being basic attack and medium attack and ranges down here. This here is the monster factory interface. It's just going to represent all the monsters with different attack and range types as defined right here. And here is the actual vampire class. And as you can see, whenever it is going to be created, a monster factory is going to be passed inside of it and stored in this attribute. And guess which monster factory that's going to be? Going to be the vampire monster factory. And then once it is stored inside of there, there's going to be those two attributes for attack and range. And they are going to be given the values that are going to be stored inside of the specific monster factory by calling the method assign attack power and assign attack range. And up here, this is the reason why people use the abstract factory pattern. As you can see, I can create these somewhat complex objects with just two lines of code. Because what we're going to do in this situation is whenever we call for the vampire to be printed out, we're going to call to string and it's going to print out all kinds of information. And that basically leaves us with the only thing that's left, which is the builder. Again, there's going to be an interface monster builder. And like you know, interface just tells it what methods it must have. The method it must have is make monster. And what it's going to do is get past a string. And here I cut out the zombie option, just focused on the vampire. If the string is vampire, that says we need to make ourselves a vampire factory that is going to assign very specific attacks and ranges, pass it over into the vampire class or object. See, just as you see here, passed right in there. And then here, we're just going to set the name for our vampire. And the vampire class object just assigns the attack and range objects as attributes for attack and range for every vampire object that is created. So that is a brief overview of what we're going to create in the code that follows. So now what I'm going to do is step by step create everything. Now the very first thing we need is the class that defines the attributes and capabilities for each of our monsters. This is going to be public abstract class monster right like that pretty simple and we're going to have private string for its name and then we're going to have monster attack power which is the interfaces 
type and attack power. So one of the objects that implements the monster attack power interface is going to be stored inside of this. And then guess what else? We're also going to have monster attack range. And all the code that is here is available in the link underneath the video. And here we're just going to assign attack range. Then we want to force them to make our monster for us and they have to figure out how to implement that and then here I'm just going to do some really basic things in regards to just printing information in regards to what this monster is doing out onto the screen and yes it is very common to create enemies or whatever in video games exactly like this except you're not just going to print out exactly what they're doing unless it's a text-based game I guess so then we're just going to go get name for our monster and then we're going to go checks if victim is and then it is going to call for attack range or to string for attack range to print out on the screen and then we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing don't focus on this this really doesn't have anything to do with the abstract factory pattern this is just going to print information out on a screen so that you know that the abstract factory pattern actually works and then this guy is going to go attack the victim and then this is going to say get name attacks the victim four and then this is going to be attack power and then since we're going to be able to print out all sorts of things on the screen using to string well we need to string to actually be created and i think this is the thing that's confusing people is the use of to string just means whenever i put the object's name inside of system out print line it's going to print whatever i put here i think this is the thing people aren't focusing on and this is what's confusing people and now that you can focus on it you can see to string something we use all the time no problem so now that we got that we're going to print a message out on the screen that says attacks anything attack range again just print out what is inside of two string for each one of these objects and then this is going to be attack power and if you get the code and play with it and make your own abstract factory this stuff's going to be really easy so there we are all we're doing is print that out and we're done that is the class except of course we should come in here and actually create my setters and my getters source generate setters and getters and i'm just going to do it for name get name set name blah 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 blah. and i'm going to put it where way way at the bottom just so it doesn't distract you and there it is okay so we're done with that and one of you guys actually requested that i keep all of this code all in one file so i will so now what do i want to do i need to define the interface that is going to be used to define attack powers so interface monster attack power and all it's going to do is force to string to be created and there it is it's done so not that complicated of an interface then i'm going to replace to string with a real monster attack power so the first one i'm going to do is basic attack implements monster attack power and then inside of this i'm going to define the special to string that is going to be used whenever that is asked for 10 in damage is going to be returned pretty easy then i'm just going to copy this because i'm going to do exactly the same thing for medium attack medium attack except let's change this to 20 and there we go now i need to do the same exact thing exact thing for the range very simple so i'm just going to copy it paste monster attack this is going to be changed to range there we go all done and then here i'm going to change this to monster attack range monster attack range and then i'm going to change this to basic range and medium range and change this to five away like it would be spaces or something 10 away and there we are i'm done so that was how easy it was to implement those now i need to define the attributes for each monster and the methods that will define them so i need to create the interface for my monster factory and those are going to be public monster attack power which is what it's going to return and whenever you call assign attack power it is going to do just that then i'm also going to do the same thing for range and it's still monster attack power because it's using that interface and then what i need to do is just define i'm going to copy this my specific monster factories the first one i'm going to do is my zombie factory and remember it's just a time assigning the right attack power 
and attack range objects. That's all it's doing. That's all these factories are doing. Implements, boom, monster factory. And then what do I need to do? Well, I need to implement the methods needed, add unimplemented methods, and there they are. Pretty easy. And there's only going to be two of them for our zombie, and it is going to be return, new, basic, attack. Our zombies are going to be weak, and of course, whenever that is called, that is just going to print out information on the screen, and basic range. And there you go. Now I went and defined those and of course change that to range as well. And then I'm also going to have to change this to range, of course. Little bug. Sorry, that's how it happens whenever I'm working out of my head. So there we go. So that creates zombie factories that assign the right objects to power and range. So now I'm going to create a vampire factory. Again, going to do the same exact thing. Don't need to change anything except this is going to be medium attack and this is going to be medium range. Done. So that quickly, I created zombie and vampire factories. So now I have to actually create the zombie and vampire classes. And like I mentioned before, a factory is going to be sent into this class and will then assign the right objects for attack and range to said zombie. So let's do it. Class zombie extends monster add unimplemented methods and do it and the only one's going to be make monster so inside of this i need to store a monster factory because a monster factory assigns specific attributes that i need to get from it then public zombie i need to pass in the monster factory not a problem and then just go this monster factory is equal to the monster factory passed in there and then i have to go into make monster and let's say i want to go system out print line making a zombie and print that out on the screen just to show that yes i made it in here and i'm making a zombie right now and then the only thing i need to do is get the attack power and the range that is stored inside of my zombie factory so equals monster factory dot assign attack power done and then this one's going to be attack range equal to monster factory assign attack range done and then exactly the same thing is going to be done to create my vampires so there's no reason to sit here and go and worry about making anything different except changing my names because that's all i'm doing and then i just need to copy this boom and everything else stays the same except this is going to be vampire as well there we are piece of cake so now i have my monsters defined with their individual attacks and ranges and i have a factory for making them now the only thing i need to do now is make or create a way to order monsters and the abstract class monster builder is going to do that for me so protected abstract it's going to return a monster make monster and remember i said it's going to receive a string that's going to tell it the type of monster to make well oh, it's abstract and then public monster order a monster which is going to receive a string type of monster right like that we're going to get a monster type make it equal to make monster which is going to call this method right here and pass to it whatever type of monster is okay that's all it's doing and then i want to test out all the methods for my monster to make sure it's working so and most importantly i need to make the monster and that is just going to be a call to make monster which is right there see making a vampire da, 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 da. and then make monster here in a minute is going to define exactly what type of monster is going to be made then i'm going to go monster and we could do something like check if victim is in range and the monster attack the victim there we go and then of course finally we want to return the monster back to the calling method that is going to call this which is going to be main as you're going to see here in a second well, now that i have that all built i need to extend my monster builder so that people can actually order monsters easily just by passing in a string so i'm going to go class order a monster and what i mean by order is to ask for one and then receive one not put them in order monster builder add on implemented methods there you go and then here we're just going to say we want a monster type call it the monster and give it a null value and then this is going to be real simple if type of monster passed in you already saw this we're going to check if it equals zombie and if it does equal zombie we're going to create a zombie 
factory, I'm just going to call it monster factory, is equal to new zombie factory, right like that. And then I want to create a zombie monster that's going to store the object specific for each zombie so they can be assigned to this monster. And to do that, I just go to the monster is equal to new zombie and pass in a monster or what is the zombie factory. And again, that's just this guy up here. See? There's a zombie constructor and it's being passed a zombie factory and it's going to be stored and then we're going to call for the methods inside of the zombie factory. So that's what's going on there. And then I'm just going to give the zombie a name, which again really doesn't have anything to do with anything. I'm just going to call him Zombie Bob. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my vampire. If in this situation, I'm just going to type in vampire. And of course, this is going to be vampire factory. See? Same exact thing. And then this is going to be new vampire. And then this is going to be vampire. And I'm going to call him Paul. And that's it. And then at the end, we're going to go return the monster. And we are pretty much done. Now all we got to do is make all this work inside of main. So class, monster, maker, test, public, static, void main. Create a way to order our new monsters. Well, that's going to be a monster builder, and we're only going to ever need to create one of those. Then we're going to go order a monster, right like that, which is just the guy that extends the monster builder. Say, order a monster. It's right here. Order a monster. Then, to make our new monster, go monster, and let's say that I know this is going to be a zombie. I just go monster builder order a monster, call that method, and pass into it zombie. And where's that coming from? See, monster builder, we know this is an order a monster and order a monster, come up here, and we're passing in zombie. That's where it's coming in and this is the code that's gonna be executed. So come back down here and then we're just going to make a simple call to the to string method. And whenever we call zombie, it's just gonna print out whatever is stored into string. And let's say I wanna put like a new line in there for some reason. And then I just wanna do exactly the same thing for my vampires. See, two lines of code prints out all that stuff. That's why it's useful. And everything is treated like a real world object. Vampire. And if we want to print out vampire specific thing, just call two string on the vampire monster. Save everything. And go over to monster maker test. And if I did everything right, this should work. Run as Java application. And there you can see, making a zombie. All that information got passed in, all the specific attributes for the zombie, and then all the specific attributes were passed in for our vampire. So there is another look at the abstract factory pattern. I have a link above to a previous explanation of how it works that's more verbose. Please leave any questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.